Holy shit. So, it's been a while since I made part one of my Lua tutorial. Today, it's part two. So today, we will take a look at the Lua messages. This will still require the sample and the changes files that I left in the last part. So if you didn't saw the last part, go watch it. You may be wondering, what are Lua messages? These are the most amazing thing of the file. Because it can manipulate elements from screen gameplay. The main, the screen where everything goes in of the gameplay. Bit. So how does it work? Underneath the mod section that I covered in part 1, it's a section called messages. It should look like this. Where it says Lua messages go here, you can add them by using message command equals function self after you insert a name. It's the place where you're gonna add the Lua messages. Now, Lua messages are stored in message commands that normally look like this. That's the basic structure of a message command. To make one, you have to put a name and then add message command equals function self. And after that, you add the command. That's simple. Let me show you an example of a basic bounce command. So you add bounce and then message command equals function self together. And then we're gonna start with p1 equals bounce. That will make the player bound bounce. And then effect period equals one. It makes the effect be applied on every beat. But to make that actually happen, we have to put player one equals effect clock BGM. It's required to make it work because BGM will try to look for every single beat that is going on with the music. Effect magnitude will set how much will that effect we apply to the bounce command. And the same thing now for player 2. In Vibrate, it's the same thing, just that this time effect period and effect clock are removed because Vibrate just uses effect magnitude to determine the force of a vibration. It can be applied to one player, both, or the entire screen. And now the thing would be, how do you apply them? So those messages are just, well, messages. You have to give the mod table the action to use that message. To do that, we copy the name of the message that we use. Don't include message command. And the way to add it is the same as the mod table, with the beat timing too. Although there are some mods that you may want to stop, such as bounce and vibrate, because they don't stop until you give the action to stop. To do this, just make a message command that looks like this. This command will say that the effect must be stopped on both players. And then you can play the song. One thing to mention is, unlike the normal mods, these will not be displayed on the editor. Some mod tables, such as the one from Kinero, do allow the editor to show the transitions, but that requires a different setup to even work. And that's part 2. I hope you guys liked it. This was really short. And if you have questions about the mod table that you want me to cover, put it in the comments, and I'll probably cover them in a potential part 3. If I do get enough ideas or comments about it, so... Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are we even talking about?